Lawrence was a sleazy merchant who could make you sell your soul to him for half the price, but this skill only made him encounter a hot demigod wolf girl who forced him into an unlikely journey instead of turning her over to the witch finders. During a snowy night, a little brat kept begging his mom to tell him a bedtime story like in the start of a bad Hollywood movie. His mom, who seems to lack proper storytelling skills, kept listing boring story titles like the time she visited a very salty and large pond or the time she bit the bottom of a pompous fool because she felt like it. However, the brat wasn't interested and wanted stories that he hadn't heard before. So she decided to tell him an old tale from a village far, far away which sounds a lot like the village from Shrek 2. She began the story by stating that it was about a down bad wolf who protected the harvest of a village because it was simping over its youths. And because there wasn't much for a wolf to do in the old days, it took it upon itself to become their farm guard. The wolf stood guard over their crops better than P2, Poof, and Yupi protected King Meruem. All this in the hopes that the villagers would one day love it. But bestiality never really caught on in the village. Instead, the village people started blaming everything that happened to their wheat stalks on the wolf. Whenever the wheat stalks swayed in the wind, they would say, The wolf is running. And when the ears of the wheat got flattened by the wind, they would say, The wolf trampled the wheat. They even started accusing the wolf of stealing their crops by saying, The wheat was eaten by the wolf whenever their harvest was poor. Despite all these allegations, the wolf stayed true to his promise like a knight of the round table and watched over the village. However, the villagers soon forget about their deal with the Seuss wolf, and he eventually joins the likes of Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny as a fairy tale. Not long after, the backstabbing humans began to sow, nurture, and harvest the wheat themselves without waiting for the wolf to bring about a bountiful harvest. Then a Gojo ripoff gets stopped on his way back from selling salt by a group of knights who were obviously looking for a payday. They went through his cart and discovered that all he's packing was some fur belts and special wheat that was cold and pest resistant. He then asks the knights why they were hanging around pestering people in such a remote area, and they say it's because they'd gotten reports of a pagan festival being held in different villages within that area, and so they were there to challenge the heretics who didn't believe in their strong, gigachad, and powerful god who would spank their rice cakes if they allowed heretics to challenge his authority. So they ask Merchant Gojo if he has any information that would help them beat up the heretics that were making their sky poppy sad. But he tells them he's as clueless as they are because he's just a simple merchant. They eventually let him go, and while on his journey he sees a bunch of wheat stalks and so decides to visit the pagan village. Upon arriving at the village entrance, several men were packing up wheat from the farm. Merchant Gojo introduced himself as the traveling perv underscore sorry merchant, Kraft Lawrence. He then goes on to compliment how plentiful their harvest for the year looked in a bid to make them comfortable with his presence. The farmers immediately start bragging about their farming skills, but before they could start a pissing contest about who gets to bang the white-haired merchant, Lawrence informed them that he was looking for his buddy Yare. They then inform him that Yare was in a field over the yonder with a group of young men, most likely getting his back blown out. This causes Lawrence to worry and rush towards the field, where he's greeted by the screaming voices of men yelling, The wolf is there! As he got closer to the field, he saw a group of people in a circle harvesting wheat as a large crowd watched and shouted instructions. Then a pretty man, obviously Yare, walked up to a single sheaf of wheat, cut it, got named the halo, and then began howling at the sun before getting chased by people, while Lawrence watched in awe. While running, Yare sighted Lawrence in the distance, but immediately got tackled to the ground by some villagers, who then gleefully carried him to a barn and locked him inside, where he was to remain for the week with Lawrence watching the Oscar-worthy play from afar. After the wheat harvesting was concluded, celebration continued in the village over their bountiful harvest as several villagers placed decorations across the town square. While that was going on, Lawrence met up with a balding old geezer who informed him that the harvest was due to the efforts of their new lord, Count Arendot. This information caused Lawrence to remark that the era of praying to invincible sky daddies has ended. The old geezer then stated that if they made the wolf mad, he'd give them a bad harvest, but they had no bad harvest with the farming techniques their lord taught them. While saying this, he brought out a chest filled with silver, and he said his thanks to their new lord, whom he badly wanted to hit it off with 
but Lawrence couldn't go a minute without talking about his boy crush, Yare, who asked if he was doing a good job as their price negotiator, to which the old geezer replied in the affirmative. Adding to that, Yare always praised Lawrence for teaching him how to do business both in the field and behind closed doors. The old geezer continued rambling about how much Yare had looked forward to seeing Lawrence and asked if he would be spending the night with them. However, Lawrence said he had places to be and things to do so he couldn't keep the old geezer's bed warm that night. He continued on his journey throughout the day and stopped to rest at night while allowing his horse to eat some fresh vegetables. But while removing the tarp from his cart so he could sleep, the moon began doing something funky and Lawrence noticed movement within his cart. Upon removing the tarp completely, he discovered a sleeping, plotless red-haired girl covered only in fur, much to his confusion. Worried that someone might come along and accuse him of being a degenerate, he did what any rational person would do when they find a strange naked girl asleep in their cart. He began shaking her to wake up while shouting at her, but all this did was shake off the fur covering her head and reveal wolf ears. This caused him to fall back, shouting, causing her to finally wake up and stand up to reveal her completely plotless body, flowing red hair, red eyes, and sharp teeth. While Lawrence stood there trying to hide his Rosen Shield hero, she let out a fearsome howl at the moon that one would expect from someone like Sajin Komamura. The strange wolf lady then began stretching out her body and tail while Lawrence watched like an idiot. Then she turned to him and asked if he had alcohol, to which he replied in the negative while trying to find out who she was. However, she ignored him, asked for something to eat, and then grabbed his meat. Visibly frightened by the stranger before him, Lawrence pointed his blade at her, but this only provoked her. Rather than attacking him, she apologized because he wasn't a member of the village and went back to eating the meat she got off the floor. She informed him that the reason she slipped into his carriage was because she wished to leave the village. She introduced herself as Holo while stating that it had been a while since she had been in human form. Lawrence, who was stunned and was visibly moved by his first ever plotless encounter, remarked that he knew someone else called Holo. Still, she disagreed, insisting that no other creature but her bear the name Holo. Then he asked if she was a god because that was what the villagers call their god of harvest, and she confirmed, much to his shock, that although she'd been called a god and bound to the village for a long time, she indeed wasn't a god. Then she leaned over with her melons bouncing before him and said she came from a land called Yoitsu, but he had never heard of it before. At this point, the cold weather began affecting her and she stumbled into the cart to cover herself with fur. Still glitching from the sight of her melons, Lawrence climbed in after her asking for proof that she was indeed the wise wolf Holo, insisting that she transform into her wolf form, which she refused to do. However, after threatening to turn her over to the church or the village if she failed to prove her claim, Holo relented and agreed to transform. Still, she warned him that any creature who wished to change forms must pay the price and in her case she'd need blood from the living or a small amount of wheat. With that, she ate the wheat in his cart and began transforming, but the sight of her transformation was so gruesome, nothing the Power Rangers dance he'd expected so Lawrence wet his pants on the spot. Soon after, he returned to the village and asked the old geezer if he could spend the night there after all but he suddenly got interrupted by Yare. The old geezer showed him to his room where he kept his belongings before going to join Yare for a feast. Lawrence then confronts Yare about the fact that he ought to be confined within the granary for the week so that Holo won't escape from the last sheaf of wheat he harvested. But Yare dismissively countered that there was no wolf actually living in the wheat fields. They then begin to catch up over food and alcohol with Yare praising Lawrence for his negotiation abilities while reminiscing over how they met. Yare reminded Lawrence that, at the time, he was the only merchant willing to buy their then-tax-inflated wheat. At the same time, Lawrence remarked that very few towns wanted to work with an unremarkable newbie like him. Still, in a drunken haze, Yare begged Lawrence to whip him senseless in negotiation once more. After that, they headed outside, where Yare joyfully screamed that the village would have plenty of great harvests in the future. Lawrence added that he hoped Holo stayed in a good mood. This statement got Yare irritated, who quickly asserted that their good fortune has nothing to do with batty wolves and that they no longer needed old gods, especially with the church and their sky daddy watching them. With this, Lawrence returned to his room where he met Holo lying in bed waiting for him. They began a conversation with Lawrence asking where she hid in the village, to which she replied that she lived inside the wheat. During the harvest, she stayed in the last piece of wheat which made escape quite difficult. 
However, this year, Lawrence had a larger amount than the last sheaf of wheat located close by, which allowed her to leave the harvest ground without being seen by the villagers. Thus, she owed him a great debt, but it appeared that he feared her. He then replied that although he was the one who requested that she transform, seeing her in her true form scared him. So he assumed that she disappeared from his sight as a result of his reaction. But Holo remarked that it was normal for humans to show fear when they see her true form, and that only one villager reacted otherwise and that person asked her to gift the village with bountiful harvests. However, so many bountiful harvests were damaging the land. So sometimes she created bad harvests, but the people of the village just called her fickle and started relying on her less and less. After hearing her story, Lawrence agreed to take her wherever she wished, to which Holo replied that she'd like to go north to her home. Thus, the next day they began their journey to Holo's home as she shamelessly flirted with Lawrence, much to his discomfort. Lawrence woke up in the morning to clear skies and a beautiful view of the endless green landscape around him. When he got up and began stretching, Holo sat up inside the wagon of furs and did the same, so he asked if she'd slept well. Holo told him that she had since the furs were nice and warm, making him smile at her behavior. When he turned to pull out a wooden bowl, he heard her clap her hands, so he turned to look at her and she explained that she'd squashed a flea. Lawrence told her it was normal for them to be there as she had quality fur, and she thanked him for noticing the beauty in her white-tipped tail even though that wasn't what he was talking about. She then began telling him how her tail was her pride and said her ears could hear coming disasters and catch on to lies. Lawrence said nothing as she continued her self-praise until he noticed her sniffing the air around them, so he asked what the matter was. Hill told him it would be better if they packed up their things faster and found shelter because a storm was coming. By the time they got into town, it was raining cats and dogs, so they gave an offering at a church. The priest noticed Holo had a hood over her face, so he asked Lawrence who she was, and he told him that she was his wife. He explained that she had the same scar as Zuko, so she preferred to keep her face covered in public. Later on, Lawrence walked into the room he shared with Holo and found her in her birthday suit. Since he wasn't a shameless peeping Tom, he turned his back away from her and shut the door. However, Holo made it hard for him to act like a gentleman because she turned to face him. She then asked if he'd stored the furs properly, and he told her that he had while keeping his back turned to her. As he took off his wet clothes, he asked what he was to do with the wheat he had in the wagon, and she told him that as long as she was alive, the wheat would neither spoil nor wither. However, if it were to be burned, eaten, ground into flour, or mixed into the soil, she might disappear. She also said the way to avoid that from happening was to thresh and store them somewhere. Lawrence told her that he'd throw them later and asked if she wanted to keep some with her, so she told him to put some in a bag she could wear on her neck. He told her he would do just that but said he would try selling the rest of it in another town, which made her point out that it wouldn't survive if it were planted elsewhere. Thinking about what she said, he took off his shirt and jumped back a bit when he realized she was sniffing him. Lawrence asked if she understood the concept of personal space, but she ignored his question and pointed out that he smelled like a sewer even though he'd been drenched by the rain. She told him that a good-looking man with a putrid smell would send all the females he was trying to riz up into a coma. Lawrence argued that his natural garbage-smelling cologne didn't affect him while he did business so he wasn't bothered. Hollow then told him that his beard looked nice and he began saying it was one of his best features. However, she told him she preferred men like Zeke Yeager, who had full beards to guys with chicken scratches on their chins. Lawrence felt insulted but he pushed those feelings aside and suggested that they go to the common area to dry their clothes. He said that a fire had been lit there, so it would be the best place to dry them, since it would be warm. When they stepped out of the room, he told her that there were going to be other people in the common room and advised her to keep herself hidden properly. Holo assured him that she wouldn't be discovered since she used to travel in that form so many times and had never been caught once. In the common room, they sat next to a rich merchant and his wife, and while they discussed, Lawrence told the man that he was from Yorin's. He explained that he was also a merchant and had bought some salt in his hometown without paying any money. He found it intriguing as he'd never heard of people buying and selling without money before. Lawrence told him it was because he had given them wheat that was equivalent to the salt he had received from them. The man admitted that although he owned a vineyard, he had never made payment in such an unusual way. He told Lawrence that if he ever visited his hometown in Parenzo, he was welcome to stop at his house. He then woke his wife, who had been dozing off beside him, and together they walked to their room. 
After they left, a young man approached Lawrence and struck up a conversation with him. He told him that he'd wanted to speak to the merchant but hadn't gotten the chance to do so, and introduced himself as Zarin. After their introduction, Zarin noticed Holo sitting beside Lawrence and asked if she was his companion. Lawrence told him she was his wife, which made Zarin say that he must treasure her so much since he covered her up. He then attempted to take off her hood to see what she looked like, but Holo stopped him by saying something mysterious. Her words surprised him, so he took his hand back and told them that God had brought them together. Later on in their room, Lawrence brought Holo some boiled potato with goat cheese toppings, but before she could eat it, he stopped her. When she asked why she wasn't allowed to eat yet, he handed her a small pouch containing some of the wheat. He handed it over to her, but since she was more interested in the food, she dropped it by her side and reached for the food. Still, Lawrence stopped her, saying the food and the wheat pouch had some money which she needed to pay back. He also pointed out that she needed to pay for his clothes which she was wearing, and Hilo told him that if it was money he needed, she'd get him some. She then grabbed the plate and began stuffing her face with as much food as she could, but since she wasn't, she began to choke. Holo immediately grabbed a cup and downed the contents, and when she was sure she wasn't going to die by choking, she complained about how human throats were narrow. Lawrence told her that if she chewed her food properly, she wouldn't have such problems, but Holo argued that wolves swallowed their food because they had no cheeks. She then went ahead to stuff her face with more potatoes and began choking again, so she drank more wine. When she was done, Lawrence asked how accurate her inbuilt lie detector was, and she told him that it was. She even gave an example by telling him that she knew he had lied when he had praised her tale earlier. Lawrence then asked what she thought about the deal Zaharin had proposed to them in the common room. Holo thought back to the conversation they had with the young man about some new coins that were about to go into circulation. He had told them that if they gathered enough of the old coins, they could make a good profit by exchanging them for the new ones. Zaharin had offered to give them all the information they needed in exchange for part of the profits they would make. Back in the present, Holo told Lawrence that she believed Zaharin was trying to rope them into some type of pyramid scheme. She then asked Lawrence what he wished to do and he told her he'd act like he was interested. He said if the information turned out to be true, he'd make some cool cash, but if it wasn't, he could investigate it further. The next morning, Lawrence woke to find Hiko's bed empty, so he went outside to wash his face. While he was there, the doors of the church opened and some people came out along with Holo. When he asked what she'd been doing, she told him she'd been interested in knowing what they were preaching about. She also told him that the church had changed from what she had known it to be, but said the change was constant. Lawrence then asked if she had changed as well, but she said nothing. Later on, they met with Zaharin, and Lawrence told him that he was interested in working with him, but said he had to get some money first since he had none. Zaharin told him there was no problem and suggested they meet up in the port city of Pazio, where they would draw up an official contract. After they parted ways, Lawrence and Holo continued their journey, and after they talked about a few things, Holo asked if he knew why wolves hunted humans. When he told her no, she said it was because they wished to eat their heads and gain their power. She then asked if he'd been attacked by wolves and he said that he had, after which he began remembering a particular time he tried to get away from a pack of hungry wolves. Holo kept asking him questions about them, but it only made him agitated, so he begged her to stop. Realizing that she had said something wrong, she apologized to him and kept quiet. After a while, she asked if he was mad at her and he told her that he was because her words had been insensitive. Holo then told him that the same way humans feared wolves was the same way wolves feared them. This made him realize that she might have been haunted by humans, and when he tried to ask about it, she told him that some things were better left unsaid. However, he apologized, and she told him that they were now even since they had each been insensitive to each other's feelings. My fellow Rizzlers, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on this next one right here and keep on laughing.